Let's pray um, before we get started. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we thank you uh, for your faithfulness over our lives. Lord, we continue to lean into your wisdom, uh, into your knowledge and your understanding. Holy Spirit, come and uh, open our eyes to the hidden things of your word, I pray. Um, Lord, even as we learn, continue to learn about ministering, healing and deliverance, uh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would um, continue to guide us, rest on us, uh, give us the confidence and the encouragement that we need uh, to go about doing your work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, well, good morning. Once again, thank you all for joining. Good to see you. Um, are you all doing okay? Yes. Have breakfast? Did you all have the time to have breakfast? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, can you he uh, hear me at the back? Is that okay? The mic volume? Okay. Great. Okay, uh, so in the last session, we completed Chapter 7. Um, let's just take a quick uh, look at Chapter 7. We'll have like a quick glance, a review, and a run-through. Um, chapter 7 is titled Practical Guidelines on Ministering uh, Healing. Right? We have emphasized that the same chapter, everything that we've learned, every uh, steps, uh, points that we've seen, uh, can also be applied on receiving healing, not just ministering healing. Are you all clear? Yes, okay. So these are the different ways to minister healing, but these are also the same ways to receive healing. Okay, it's very important that we uh, understand and realize that. Okay, so one is through personal faith in God. Uh, with that, we can also exercise faith for others as well. Uh, as much as you can pray for yourself, we know that. You know, um, we, we can also say we can stand in the gap for other person, other people. Um, through a prayer of agreement. Another word for agreement we saw was unity. Thank you. Okay, someone was paying attention in class. <laughs> okay, uh, agreement is unity. There's power in agreement. That means we can say there's power in unity. And that's one thing that the devil is after, like to break the unity of the churches and the families, etc. Through the prayer of faith, through a word of command, uh, through the laying on of hands, with anointing oil, with the word of command, etc., um, and through the announcement of faith, through the action, acting on faith, etc., etc. Okay, so those were all the things that we saw uh, in chapter seven last class quite extensively. Uh, today we move into chapter eight. Um, we look at chapter eight and chapter nine together. Um, Okay, and please note that I, I think I have mentioned in the beginning of this course that uh, chapter 10 and chapter 11 will be covered in uh, BC 112. Okay, that's, uh, in, in, yeah, that's um, in, a, in a whole, and also BC 216, that is uh, in a wholeness uh, course as well. Okay, BC 112 and BC 216. Okay, that is chapters 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so. Um, yeah, um, so depending on the time, we will cover chapter 8, chapter 9, and ch chapter 13 uh, today. Okay, chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 13 today. So if we are able to conclude chapter 13, uh, we will be concluding, uh, you know, this course as well. Um, so, yay, happy news. Huh? Okay. If we finish everything on time. Uh, today most probably will be the last lecture for this course, okay? And uh, and I'll share about the assignment and everything uh, later. Okay, are you all okay? Is good. Any questions? Okay, uh, any questions before we even begin this class? Yes, from those online. Okay, all right then, let's get started. Chapter eight, um, it's a simple model for ministering healing. Now we've learned different ways to minister healing and deliverance, but uh, what is what is the meaning of uh, 
a simple model to for uh, ministering healing or uh, like for example um, i'm not sure in your school days if you had to do any um, science projects like model build a model train or a model car or something like that um, it's just a small scale thing or a guidance for a bigger picture right so in this chapter chapter 8 we will be learning five different steps or ways to actually minister healing and deliverance okay um now again this is adopted by this person called john wimber has anybody heard of john wimber no that's fine if you don't know you can just say don't know sir okay yeah, thank you he's like um, you know i think he studied with me no. <laughs> so john wimber is the founder of the vineyard movement uh, vineyard churches movement in the early 80s uh, 80s 90s and everything so um, vineyard is a pretty big movement uh, that was you know birthed in the us and the uk and uh, so john wimber was the founder of that okay and so he was pretty big on ministering healing and deliverance and so he put this model together uh, and uh, and please note that this is again just a guideline okay it's just a guideline so here when you see look at your notes you will see there are five steps that's the interview the diagnosis the method selection the ministry and the post ministry suggestions okay um, no, as we've always emphasized that the healing uh, and deliverance is not in the method, it is in the person. Okay, can we get that right? Okay, the healing and deliverance is not in, in the method, it is in the person. So tomorrow or today or whatever or in the future, that means that you can go out and minister healing and deliverance and you could, God can use a completely different method through you, which you didn't study in this course. And you should be absolutely fine with that. Will you be fine with that? OK, yeah. So he is God. He can come up with creative ways to minister healing and deliverance. We are not going to put God in a box and say, OK, these are the only five steps. Only then, he, you know, if you do formula one, formula two, follow step one, step two, only then he's going to move. No, Psalm 115. Very good. Okay, he is God. He will do whatever he pleases. Okay, we just need to be open to that. All right. Um, so let's go through these uh, simple uh, model, and we'll see how we can learn to minister healing. All right. Is that fine? Okay. Um, so the first step is in how you can minister healing and deliverance to an individual is uh, what we'll call it as the interview process the interview process okay um, simple questions like um, now again if you have the time uh, to have this conversations you can ask all these questions now there might be a prayer gathering where there'll be like 50 people 100 people 150 people uh, is like okay come please sister tell me what is your name where are you from what is your history you know uh, where does it hurt how you know the history and all no uh, you have to be you know Sometimes I think we forget to use common sense also. <laughs> right? If you have the time, if you have the opportunity uh, to pray for the person, um, ask them the question, get to know them. Right? It's very important. Like, what is their name? I mean, just to you know, address them by their name. It's a good thing, right? Um, in the corporate world, we used to call it, uh, I, when I used to work in the call center, you, they would say, you have to personalize the call. Right, first, uh, yeah, that means you have to address them by their first name or their last name is like, uh, you know, Mr. Jonas or Mr. Asapu, whatever. Um, right, so it's just personalizing makes it more meaningful when you're ministering someone, ministering to someone. Okay, so get to know them, what's their name, and when you're praying, eventually you can say, Lord, I pray for so and so, I pray for Joseph, I pray for Asap, you know, so you're using their name, isn't it? So, first step is the interview process in that you get to know who they are and what the condition is okay and say okay pastor please pray for me uh okay i'll pray for you okay fine that's okay no problem uh but getting to know uh, just a little bit in detail of what the condition is right okay what can i pray for 
right? Uh, I, I need healing, Pastor. Okay, so what do you need healing for? Right, just to understand if it's the condition is uh, physiological. Physiological simply means if it's the, with the body or a psychological, it means if it's with their mind, right? Or, or if it's also spiritual. Okay, so it could be physiological, psychological, spiritual. Um, I mean, so eventually when you get to the root cause, when you find out, okay, this is what it is, you can discern that, okay, hey, this is not just a, a body problem. Uh, you know, for example, let's say a person comes, it's like, Pastor, I've been having this, uh, I'm finding it hard to breathe. I'm having chest pains in the night while sleeping, whatever. You know, I'm just example, okay? Uh, I've, I've gone to the doctors. They've done all this X-ray and CT scan or whatever thing, but everything seems to be normal. I don't know what it is, but in the nights, every time I go to sleep, I feel suffocated. I'm not able to. And so, okay, the doctor reports says it's normal. Everything else is, seems to be fine. Um, we can come to a conclusion saying, okay, you know, this could be something spiritual about it. Are you with me? Right? So this is where the first step, the interview process is very important. And so, uh, you know, there is a list of questions that's mentioned in the notebook. Uh, where do I go? Page number in the PDF is 122 at least in the PDF version that I am using, it's 122. Uh, simple questions like, what is your name, right? Uh, what would you like prayer for? Uh, are we all looking at those questions? OK, let's uh, look at those. Let's be on the same page. Uh, what would you like prayer for? It's a good question to ask, isn't it? What can I pray for? What would you like prayer for? Uh, you know, I, I'm pastor. I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling distressed. I'm feeling anxious. Okay, so now you know it's it's like a little bit of a psychological thing as well, right? On or mo some cases or most cases, it can be a combination of all three. <laughs> it could be physiological, psychological, spiritual, or it could be a combination of two, either one. Okay, but the point is, you just get to know the condition a little better. That's it. So you can be very specific. Are you with me? OK. Uh, some of the other questions. How long have you had this condition? Do you know what the cause is? Ask that person, do they know what the cause is? How did this happen? Or since when it's been happening? Are you with me? OK, so for another example, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just thinking of examples on the go. And um, so. I'm just reminded of certain situations, such as circumstances that I've come across and that I'm just you know, sharing that with you. Um, it could be a person where they would have gone to a place where they should not have gone, right? Or, or for example, they would have played a, a board game that's associated with uh, black magic or some sort of sorcery, you know, because their friends, you know, actually school kids these days, um, play some kind of a game called Charlie, Charlie something. You know, have you heard of that? Oh, he's giving a big head. Yes, uh, you know, I played that game. You know, it's uh, so that's an example, right? So let's say it's a game that it's forbidden, as in it's you're just opening up a door for the the devil and his demons to come in and enter in, right? To have their way in your life. Uh, let's say an individual has done that. So. And if if that person remembers, is it, you know, I've been getting these very very bad dreams and experiences since the time I played that game. Okay, so you now know that the root cause there. Okay, a door was opened then because of that. Okay, so it's, it's, it's giving you a better context to minister to the person. You're not just treating the person, okay, let me pay, okay, okay, go heal, okay, in Jesus' name, okay, heal, okay, Jesus. No, you're taking time to understand the condition. Are you with me? Building more context. Okay, so we are not doctors here, but you know, <laughs> uh, you, I hope you all understand, uh, you know, the importance of that, uh, that first thing, right? We're, we're just trying to understand the root cause of it. Okay, now, um, the second step is the diagnosis. What's the first step, guys? What's the first part? The interview process, OK? The first round is the interview. Uh, you get to know them, get to know their condition, um, their little bit of their medical history, uh, if possible. 
Okay, the second one is the diagnosis. Why do they have this condition? We kind of touched upon this in the previous point. Okay, so why now you are coming to a conclusion, you as a minister, right? You are coming to a conclusion. Okay, so this is why. All right, we are not trying to take the place of the doctors. Please remember that. Um, right, so again, uh, let's look at the notes there. It says this is about identifying the root of the person's problem if possible okay it is about identifying the root of the person's problem that is if possible it's not always necessary but helpful to know the root cause okay you can highlight that it is not always necessary all right um so that you, you tomorrow i don't want you to go out and say while you're ministering healing and deliverance i don't say okay this is the second step this is what i learned in the course that i have to go through this diagnosis step otherwise uh, you know i can't pray for you no 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 okay it's not necessary if it's possible get the uh, you know get some clarity and context on, of the condition and go ahead with that okay now um <clears throat> look at the several reasons why people may need help Right? It says natural causes, it could be disease or accident. Natural causes that, that say a person would have met with an accident, right? And hurt their back or their leg, whatever. So that's a natural cause. And that is a proper a physiological problem, like a physical problem in their body. Um, another one could be sin committed by them or to them. Okay, committed by them or to them. So we can, uh, when I say to them, another example, a sin committed to them could be, um, for example, someone was physically abused. Right? A a any individual, for example, is physically and sexually abused. Let's say that, okay? Um, I'm not just talking about, talking about the girls, by the way. Boys are also physically and sexually abused. Okay, <laughs> let's be very clear on that. Um, <clears throat> now, what would have happened is, say, you know, because of that, because of that incident, it is possible. The possibilities are huge, and that you can um, harbor bitterness, right, and offense, and hurt, and anger, and resentment, and this rage build up. Because, you know, I was. It, this was done to me. This was done to me. How could this person do to me? Are you with me? And because of that, you as a person have become very bitter. And you, as a person, don't trust anyone around you. Right? You put on a mask, or you put on a wall, a shield, right? Like this, I'm strong, I'm always strong, you know, kind of a thing, you know? So sin committed by them or to them, emotional hurts causing physical or other pain. Emotional hurts. Again, um, you know, some of the most dangerous people that I have met in my life, um, some of the most the most dangerous people that I have met in my life are those who are bitter. You know, bitter, bitterness, bitterness, matlab kya? Unforgiveness, what do you call bitter people? It's like, I will not forgive you. How can they do this to me? Someone gives anything, any equivalent of that in Hindi? Anyone online? <laughs> okay. Um, let's. I'll use the word unforgiving people. Okay, people who have not forgiven. Okay, the most some of the most dangerous people I have met are those individuals who have not forgiven. Okay, and uh, you are looking at one of the person. <laughs> I was one of those person uh, who had great difficulties with forgiveness um, for almost 10 years I could not forgive an event or an incident and the pers people that was involved with that I, and I it was very hard and what that did what unforgiveness and bitterness did to me is that it did open doors it changed me as a person okay it completely changed me as a person it took me away from God now, when you're away from God, 
you can only be close with someone else. When you are away from God, you are with someone. That's the only other place where you can be. If you are away from God, means that means you are with someone else. <laughs> okay, and that someone else is not very nice. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's another cause: uh, relationship problems, lack of forgiveness, supernatural, maybe demonic. So one thing could have led to another. Okay. Now. Why is this step a little important is as you are listening to the person as you know, for example, say Joseph is sharing is like, you know, I have this problem. I have been having this problem since so and so now at, while I'm listening to him, it is very important for me to also listen in to the Holy Spirit. OK, now why? Because the Holy Spirit will be may share something, you know, that is necessary on how I should minister, or the Holy Spirit may reveal to me some of the things that Joseph doesn't reveal to me. Are you understanding? No. When you're listening to the person, it is also very important that you listen to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the person might not always necessarily tell you everything. Not, I mean, not because they might want to hide it. They might not necessarily remember it. It might be intentional. It might also not be, in, you know, intentional. Okay, um, so that's why it's a very important. While you're listening to the person, you also listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the first step is the interview. The second one is the diagnosis. Why do they have this condition? So once you have the conclusion, okay. So this is the condition. This is what it is. Okay. The next is uh, the method. Um, the word of knowledge. Yeah. Thank you. The method selection. Okay, what kinds of methods to use when ministering? What kinds of methods to use when ministering? Now we've learned a bunch of it, like laying on hands, anointing with oil. Uh, it could be both laying on hands and anointing with oil. Uh, petition, simply inviting the Holy Spirit, asking for healing, intercessory prayer in English and spirit, the command of faith, the pronouncement of faith, the pronouncement, um, the binding and rebuking demonic powers, forgiving and renouncing past hurts and wounds. OK. Uh, now, again, um, laying on hands, uh, anointing with oil, um, I think it's always safe. It, it depends on the context. But I think it's, but it's always safe to ask the person, um, can I lay my hands on you? Uh, can I anoint you with the oil? Um, and whatnot. If they say no, okay. Uh, can I use oil? You're like, no, I don't want you to use. Well, fine, no problem. Uh, can we close our eyes? I was like, no, I don't want to close my eyes. I want to look at you. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do? It's fine, right? Now, if, if you are going to say, oh no. This person, the healing is not going to happen if I don't lay my hands, if I don't use the oil, nothing's going to happen. That's where the fundamental problem is. Why? Because you're giving way too much importance to the method. And you don't have enough confidence in the name of Jesus. Okay? So if the person says, sure, pastor, or, you know, whatever, you can lay your hands on me. Yes, sure, you can use the oil, you can use the cloth, whatever you want to, no problem. You want me to close my eyes? Sure, I'll close my eyes. No problem. Right? So uh, the next thing is, the third part in the step is that you, what do you do? You choose a method that you want to minister. OK, so you've done the interview. You've done the diagnosis. That means you've come to the conclusion as so what you want to do, uh, as in what the condition is or what the root cause is. And then the third thing is you decide uh, which method you want to choose to minister healing and deliverance. Are you all with me? Right. Uh, any questions so far? Fundamental basic question like, sure. uh, in a scenario where you are going to pray for somebody and he or she is not in a position to speak up for the pipes, foot pipes, or anything for sure. that matter, it's perfectly fine to ask the person whoever is attending. Yes, no? Yeah, 100%, yes. 
And in a scenario when you are also looking out for a cause, like what caused it, it could also come as a response. We absolutely don't know what. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, and you continue. Yeah. Um, so we we still continue to minister. If they say don't know, uh, it's okay. Right. I think um, um, what is important is that you ask that question, you pose it, uh, and see what they say about it. That's about. It. And if the person, like you mentioned, is bedridden and not able to speak with, for whatever reason, uh, maybe they have a, you know, a stem stroke, a brain stem stroke, and or they are paralyzed one side, they are not able to speak. Um, then their family member, uh, you know, can speak for them. They have to if they are there. Uh, but otherwise, if in the worst case scenario, if nobody is there, you don't know. Um, you still minister. Whatever the condition is, you you pray in Jesus' name to completely heal the person. Yeah, that's it. I believe if there was uh, somebody that I knew just for two months and uh, he was around maybe 21, 22 years of age, he's from Orissa. So I something prompted me to just put a message, how are you doing and so forth. And I didn't get a response for a week. And later again, I felt, you know, to reach out to him. And he said, no, I had a stroke. So it was you know, very uh, you know, unreliving, like 21 years of age, no smoking, no drinking. And then uh, he didn't know the reason and cause. But then the doctors did mention some uh, place where there was blood, the blood flow wasn't there. So. Correct, yeah. Yeah, the strokes are usually caused by because of the lack of blood flow or blood clot to the brain. Yeah, my father-in-law had a brain stem stroke. Uh, he was bedridden. So yeah, yes. Um, yeah, Shani, you have. Get uh, We'll come to you in just a minute. I see Shani has uh, raised her hand. Yeah, I just couldn't hear the person's class first question that he said that he asked you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Akhil was asking the question: um, What what do we do in a scenario where a person is not able to speak or share their condition or why? You know, um, at that um, times like that, if there's a family member there who is present, um, they can share on behalf of the person as to what the condition is and uh, what caused it, if possible. So that was basically a question from Akhil. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, get rid yeah, you can ask your question. Okay, I have a question. Like, uh, if you want to pray for your children or for your relatives who have problems regarding relationship, anger, unforgiveness, what is the best way to pray? Intercessory or uh, uh, binding and losing? If a family member or your relative is uh, harboring unforgiveness against you, no, not against me, but against the other family members. Against anger, other family members? Yeah. Uh, anger, resentment, unforgiveness, and then so many things bottled up. And how right. to set them free in their mind? Yeah, uh, I mean, see, as a good uh, family member, what I would do, um, because I love both sides, right? Let's say this uh, side A is not happy with site C and then the site B in the middle stuck uh, but because I like I love both of them I want uh, I want them to have reconciliation and so yeah. uh, yes I am going to pray for them uh, for 100 percent and I will intercede for the peace that passes all understanding to invade their hearts and uh, that there will be supernatural intervention in all of that um, I am going to pray for that. And then in that authority and in that confidence, I will also speak with the individual sides as well, you know, encouraging them, teaching about the, what the Bible says, you know, um, I think Jesus asks us to forgive, to walk in uh, forgiveness, um, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we do our bit and then we surrender uh, to Jesus. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you. Any other questions that you guys would like to ask before we move on? Can you use the mic, please, just for the benefit of everybody online? This method for for only for healing or for deliverance also? It's for both. Uh, 
yeah um so that's why we gauge uh, the spiritual aspect of it as well isn't it so once you gauge the condition is spiritual like for example okay you know it's a demonic uh, you know oppression um so that's the conclusion you come to and then you take the same steps accordingly yeah it's the same thing so. i mean i'm sure we've prayed for people right uh, and all of this is fundamental you would have already obviously asked you know the first two things like you know what is your name what can i pray for etc cetera, etc cetera, right um at least during the pandemic i you know I, i'm during 2020 and 2021 i mean i think the number of times i would have said i'm going to pray for you would be more than the rest of my life combined <laughs> you know uh because i mean that we we needed each other isn't it we each other needed to know that we are praying for each other isn't it um yeah okay cool uh, we'll move on and uh, so we finished the third step so the interview the diagnosis and then the third thing is you choose the method that you want to minister okay and then we move on to um the ministry itself ministering and watching what god is doing uh, this is a very simple thing uh, is if you're ministering healing and deliverance um now it's okay to not close your eyes uh you know cuz for example again if if a person is in a wheelchair or if they've broken their leg or their hand whatever uh, as you're praying you'd like to see if there's any progress happening right you'd like to see if okay are they able to Uh, is is something happening is something manifesting uh, are they able to stretch their hands and what not are you with me so uh, when you're ministering it's a, that's a simple point there is um, as you're praying you keep your eyes open you check if there's something changing physically and you ask that person like do you feel anything right sometimes them a person might tell yes i'm feeling like uh, a, a heat in my body that's going through me or to be i've heard people say electricity uh, people say um some they feel cold whatever right but the point is while during ministry you are always uh, asking them checking with them as to how they're feeling uh, are they feeling any different okay now if you're praying for a pain if you're praying for a lower back ache uh, one thing what we can always use is like a scale degree right okay from a scale of 1 to 10 Ten being uh, the pain is still the same or is more, or as you reduce, the pain is reducing. Okay, if it's a five, that means the pain is reduced. Okay, so you ask the person. Okay, Komal, uh, you know, on the scale of one to ten, uh, you know, where is your pain at now during prayer? If Komal says, okay, it's it's come down to five, Pastor, it's not as bad as how it used to be. Okay, and then okay, let's continue praying just a little bit more. Let's press in for a complete healing. Let, let let's pray until we, it comes to zero okay um so you just that's this is how we continue to minister now when do we when do we know when to stop when do we stop of course when the person is healed we stop <laughs> right it's like no no i'm going to pray some more you know <laughs> uh when the person is completely healed we stop or if the person wants to stop wants you to stop praying you honor their request and you stop okay you don't hold them by their collar and say like no no you know i will tie you up and uh, uh when the person wants you to stop or again if god god always has to be in the picture god always has to be in the picture okay if the holy spirit tells you to stop you stop understood so this through this whole thing through this all these so much information that we are learning that you know that's being shared through all this content uh, uh the common denominator or the factor is jesus god holy spirit right he is always there you are constantly leaning on his heart his understanding his wisdom okay don't depend on yesterday's success for today's ministry okay They're like no no i have been doing this healing ministry for 25 years uh, i know what to do what the secret recipe is um, so 
And in that arrogance, it is possible that you choose to say, I don't want to listen to you, God. You want to do God's work, but without Him. It doesn't make sense, is it? Right? Uh, all okay? Yes, come on. Okay, so if we are praying for someone and if we are not seeing progress, uh, what do we do? Uh, well, if the person wants you to stop praying for them at that time, now if there are, again, let's take different scenarios. If you're praying for a person who needs healing, but there, there are 25 other people who are waiting, right? Now you pray, you ask God genuinely, sincerely for Holy Spirit to minister healing and deliverance, right? If they are not healed, you continue to press in, but otherwise you ask the, tell the person, okay, we will continue to pray for you. We will continue to believe in the miracle and go. Okay, because you need to pray for every other prayers. But otherwise, if it's just that one person, uh, if depending on the time, you continue to pray. Um, and then if nothing happens on day one, day two, you will let them know with a message or whatnot saying, I'm praying for them. I'm praying for complete uh, healing. So you let them know. We don't give up. Right? We don't uh, give up. Okay? Why? Because Jesus is our healer. He's a Jehovah Rapha, that's his covenant name. We know that God is willing to heal. We know that sickness is not, uh, he is not the source of sickness. So we use the word of God and we continue to press in for a miracle. That's it. Okay. Okay. Um, last point before we move on. Uh, what should we. Uh, what should they do to keep their healing? What should they do to keep their healing? This is the post ministry suggestion. Okay. Now you, you've done the ministry bit of it. Now, post ministry, what do you do? The person is healed. What do you do? Uh, now, if a person is an unbeliever, you, you invite them into salvation. Or you, you share the gospel with them. It's like, hey, this Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. This Jesus who healed you died on the cross for you. The Bible says, uh, Romans 3, 23, you know, all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. And then six, Romans 6, 23, uh, you know, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Right? So you share the gospel, okay? Um, now, this is not an evangelism class, but one of the... Um, ways that I have learned to share the gospel uh, is this uh, thing called the, the Romans Road. Have you heard of that? The Romans Road. Uh, have you heard of the statement that says all roads lead to Rome? This is a very old statement that says all roads lead to Rome because during the Roman Empire they built the roadways in which from any country that they ruled you could reach Rome. Okay, but like I mentioned, this is not evangelism class, but uh, uh, you can find the sources online about sharing the gospel or evangelism, Romans roadway. Okay, uh, I'll share with you all later. Okay, so you invite the person into salvation. You, oh, but if, if that person is also a Christian, um, you continue to encourage them to become stronger as a believer. Uh, if it was a, it's a spiritual condition, you make, make sure that they are fill, uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Right? The point is not this thing is empty. One thing goes out, dirty water is thrown out. The purpose of this is to be filled with clean water. In this case, hot water. <laughs> Are you with me? So, you know, um, making sure that the person is baptized by the Holy Spirit and uh, you encourage them, you give them enough tools um, or resources for them to equip themselves, right, spiritually. Like how to read the Bible, how to study the Bible, making sure that they are plugged into a life group a small group into the to their churches and whatnot. Okay, if a person is healed from a broken leg, um, you would not encourage them to jump off a building. <laughs> okay, I'm 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 using uh, e extreme uh, scenarios, but common sense is also very very important. Yes, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the end of this chapter. Let's quickly review this chapter, if you will, please. Um, 
the simple model for ministering healing and deliverance a uh, first one is the interview right where does it hurt you ask the common questions um, you can make a list of frequently asked questions faqs okay uh, the diagnosis why do they have this condition right is it natural cause of sin emotional hurt relationship problems supernatural okay um, and then you decide on which method you want to uh, use to minister healing and deliverance and during the ministry time you keep your eyes open in, uh, just to see a uh, witness what god is doing and learning when to stop and post ministry encouraging them um, to grow stronger uh, you know uh, in their walk with god okay now uh, are you all okay yes um yes no maybe okay um you know i mentioned that you know it while we are listening to the individual it's also very important for us to listen to god uh, right so and that's what chapter 9 is all about and just to um just to summarize this chapter it talks about the gifts of the spirit for ministering healing and deliverance gifts of the holy spirit right um as mentioned in first corinthians chapter 12 verse from from verse 4 to 11 in verse 8 we see the word of wisdom and word of knowledge in verse 9 we see faith uh, and gifts of healing working of miracles prophecy discerning of spirits different kinds of tongues uh, to another the interpretation of tongues right uh, one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills as he wills um, so this is the gifts of the holy spirit uh, it's a gift uh, we we are encouraged to pray for it ask for it he gives it to us as he is willing uh, we don't earn it uh, or anything you know it's a gift you don't earn a gift uh okay so uh one of the key things here mentioned uh is when you're ministering again the, all of this is in the context of healing and deliverance you can use these gifts for life but in the context of healing and deliverance say word of knowledge so what is a word of knowledge can someone tell me it's no it's no knowing something about a person that's happened in the past yeah okay uh knowing something about a person that's happened in the past okay thank you what else a word of knowledge what is the difference um, between a prophetic knowing, uh, something about a person you don't know like god will give you about his sickness like what sickness is going through or is he having difficulty uh some information about the person you do not know some information about a person you do not know some information about a person i do not know yeah okay all right knowing an aspect of a person's life person's life okay and andrew, andrew says knowing their conditions and telling them okay so, okay, tell me, what is the difference between a word of knowledge and a prophetic word? So, knowledge is something that you know, and prophetic word is something that? Something like, uh, of, out of your experience or, you know, out of your flesh, something that you know, and you're just sharing it. Okay. Prophetic is something which God has put in your heart to prophesy to say right okay yeah so i think it, see a very simple uh distinction but thank you everyone for answering the question um um yes uh sanjay says prophetic points to the future or the things yet to happen uh revelation as we say it right okay so it, simple ways is for example the way i understand word of knowledge is in in as it says word of knowledge right you know something for example if um uh, this has happened to me for example uh so uh, there was a time when i was um, leading worship at north apc north uh, and uh, pastor nancy uh, prayed was she was praying and then she says okay does is someone here does some anyone here have a red color car right and there's some trouble with the finances regarding the someone with those and we're praying so what what happened is um 
so she released a word of knowledge, but I knew it. Right? I knew, okay, yeah, I have a red car and I know it. Are you with me? So something that, that you that you already know that's been told to you by another person is word of knowledge. Are you with me? If I come and say it's like, okay, uh, what is your date of birth, Joseph? Date of birth. Full date of birth, give da. Huh? 1996. That is full date of birth. <laughs> Why do you all take so long, dude? Nine? Okay, nine, eight, 1996. Okay, so I'm praying for Joseph. Okay, finally got the date. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, nine, eight, 1996. Um, so I'm praying for Joseph, and let's say you know I get these number nine eight nine 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 six. Okay, um, or I'm just generally praying, and I ask, okay, uh, does this number mean anything to anybody? Nine eight nineteen ninety six. So Joseph puts his hands up and says, uh, "That's my date of birth." He knows it, right? That's the so that's what the word of knowledge is. Something that a minister or a leader or a pastor uh, shares prophetically, uh, but that's something that you no. A prophetic word is talking to a person about, it could either be instantly right there, for example, what a prophetic word could also be is, uh, let's say again, Joseph is a drug addict. Okay, Joseph is a example, guys, okay. Um, but you are prophetically declaring in the name of Jesus, you are completely healed. You are no longer a drug addict. What am I saying? I'm declaring faith, pronouncement of Faith, that's one of the things that we learned, isn't it? So he's healed right at that moment. So that's one of the intense instances of prophetic word. Or in other words, times to say, okay, you know, God has great plans for you. I see that he's uh, got so and so, so and so, so and so planned for you. That's a prophetic word. Are you with me? Yes or no? So the, this is why we emphasize so much on um, leaning into being very sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit while we are ministering healing and deliverance. Okay? Uh, there is a huge uh, element of prophetic involved in it. Yes? And some of the ways that he speaks to us is through seeing. Seeing means that you can see some images, picture, a painting, whatever. Right? Uh, another time he might speak to you through hearing. Right? Through to your spirit. Um, and you, should, you, should, you, you may hear the Holy Spirit whisper or share some words or sentences or thought. You can say, okay, I'm hearing this word called Father. Um, does that make any sense to you? So uh, the person could open up anything regarding that's associated with the Father, right? Um, feeling, okay? Feeling is a huge thing that, uh, that I've seen people uh, minister healing and deliverance. For example, um, have you seen... Uh, you know, pastors or leaders that say, okay, uh, does anybody feel a pain on their left shoulder, for example? Why? Because they will be feeling a pain on their left shoulder. As I'm ministering, and this has happened to me not many times, just a couple of times, is uh, one with their knee. Uh, so I would feel a very weird pain on my, I felt a very strange pain on my right knee that was never there. And again, so, you know, you become so sensitive to his voice, to the way he speaks. And I'm going to take a step of faith and ask, you know, like, I could be making a complete fool of myself and say, but is there anyone here who's having a pain on their right knee? Are you with me? So, you know, God can speak to that as well. He might cause a sensation that way or... It could be so many different ways like that, that he can communicate. But the point, the way guys are looking at me is like, what am I saying? What are you saying? <laughs> okay, these are the ways that he communicates. And um, the point of all these points that's mentioned in this chapter is, um, is that we learn to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. It could be a prophetic word, a word of wisdom, uh, discernment, all of it, it boils down to just one thing, and that is uh, how sensitive to you are um, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Have you learned to understand his language? Because to each of us, he speaks differently. He may speak differently. 
but have you learned to recognize the way God speaks to you? It's very important when you are ministering, healing, and deliverance. Understood? OK. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for uh, listening. Uh, we'll take a break, and we'll come back, and we'll, we'll resume. Okay. See you guys. Have a good one.